Developmental Characteristics of Children, we're going to get a little introduction into something we as teachers need to know, the developmental characteristics of children. We're in the job of teaching. That means we work with students with different ideas and talents and experiences, all different ages and stages and development levels with different backgrounds, cultures, and values. And in order to teach all this variety, you must know the kids, all about the kids, and how they develop, because we teach the whole child. There are five different developmental characteristics that we need to consider. The first is knowing the child physically. How does their body grow and develop? How does one area of development affect the other? Bone and muscle growth affect a child's center of gravity and how they walk and their change in gait. Bone and muscle growth also affect when they lose their teeth and how their speech changes and their coordination. A change in coordination affects how they play, how they participate in PE, and their fine motor skills, also known as small motor or muscle skills and their large motor or muscle skills. This in turn affects writing, drawing, cutting, as well as getting up and down out of chairs, climbing stairs, and moving from one place to another. Another area of growth is cognitive growth or growth in knowledge. That is growing in the ability of language development. This includes listening or receptive language, talking or expressive language, reading and writing. Oh, it's really a, quite a complex field. The ability to know and work with the concept of ordinal or ordered numbers and cardinal or counting numbers is also a part of cognitive development. This also includes being able to do math computations and knowing how and when to work with numbers. The ability to reason out any type of problems problem solve, find solutions, be creative in your thinking, and thinking on higher levels is also a part of cognitive development. A third area of development is self-development. Like other areas, it too is complex. It deals with how we grow in terms of self-development, how we see ourselves, our attitudes about ourselves, our self-efficacy, or how efficient we think we are. In short, how we develop as a person with control over our emotions. Emotional responses should develop as a child develops. And there are definite ages and stages for this. And both self-development and emotional development are linked with our values. Values also come from or are linked with our social development. This includes our relationship with our family, our peers, and our school. Children often tend to relate all to all three in different ways. Have you ever heard of someone saying a child is very cooperative with the teacher, but they're totally obnoxious at home? Or they're very easy to get along with their peer group, but they have a hard time getting along with siblings? Sandwiched between self-development and social development is moral development. Moral development is influenced by what you see in society, its rules, mores, and structure. It can also be the smaller, more immediate society as family, school, or a peer group. Or it can be a larger society as an organization like scouts, or city influences or state influences. Moral development can also be accelerated by a spiritual influence, such as a religious belief. For those who grow up with spiritual influences, that background can be significant in their moral development. And what is the cog in the wheel? What does it all revolve around? Age. All of these different development characteristics depend upon age. Why? Because development is a systematic, lasting change that is continuous and gradual. And as we have seen, 
it's influenced by many internal and external factors. Vygotsky knew about development, and he had a theory about development in education, and his theory has had a definite effect on education today. As Vygotsky knew about development, so did Maslow. His theory has also had a definite effect on education today. Do you realize how? So, what's our responsibility? It's our responsibility to know the child, the whole child, to know the common ages and stages of development, the ages and stages of moral, physical, emotional, social, and con cognitive development. We need to realize that all children are not on our timetable. Each varies and grows to their own tune with their own harmony. And because of that, we must work with the child where he is developmentally. The bottom line is that we must teach the child at his level. And that's what Module 2 is all about, learning the developmental characteristics of children so we can teach at the child's level. Developmental characteristics of children. Welcome.